While I totally love watching shows with like, and dramas with like really strong black female leads, I really love genre shows. Like I love sci-fi, I love fantasy, I love like quirky situational comedies, like I like genre and therefore there's a little bit less variety when it comes to those shows um, than I do with your scandals, how to get away, get away with murders, your being Mary Jane, which y'all should be watching because it's good. I know it's on BET and you're all like, mm. it's good. Believe me. So I'm always looking for a show that can really give me one of those two things. And luckily, Netflix has two shows. Both of them are from the UK. Um, one of them is on Channel 4, I believe. I don't remember what the other program is for, but I will put it down below. Um, and those shows are Chewing Gum and Crazy Head. Chewing Gum is the story of this 24-year-old... Um, shopping assistant in London named Tracy and she is hilarious. She's like the daughter of this super religious um, immigrant, African immigrant family and she grew up in a super strict religious household and she herself is going through this coming of age where she just really wants to bone really badly but not like sexy like uh, uh, uh. it's more like that awkward of like you don't know about sex in its pragmatism. You sort of put it up on this pedestal of like you're you're just gonna like touch clip to dick. And it's gonna be like poof. Like that's that's the kind of <laughs> that's the kind of image of sex that she has of like this kind of like super intense experience that she just wants to have just to feel that release. And it's so relatable to me not because I was 24 and still feeling those feelings because when I was a teenager I felt those feelings and while. My family wasn't super religious. I think if you grow up with immigrant families, there are just certain things that are just, <laughs> they're just similar. For example, there is one scene where Tracy is like struggling to put on a tampon. And I tell you guys, to this day, I still don't know how to use tampons because no woman in my family used tampons. We were like, if you, I remember being in like sex ed classes health as they say in catholic school and you know they like you can lose your virginity to a tampon it can make you not it'll make you loose you know all those little myths in london about like how your vagina works which are not true you know this is why that scene in orange is the new black where they're like there's another hole down there and i was like oh my god i remember when i found out about a second hole i was like there's no second hole and it's like yeah there is and you're just like no one told me about this when the expectations of sex and sexuality are level with the dripping gross reality of what it actually is, that's chewing gum in this fun, inventive way. And I think the actress is just so good at her faces, her expressions, and her re it, she just encompasses so much fun and humor into everything that she does that I, I can't even really explain to you. It is just such a fun, engaging show. And I think what I love most about it is that, you know, it's got a diverse cast of characters, but I love that the lead actress is dark-skinned. Like, it just, it's so good to see because so many times, you know, you don't get that and she's dark skinned and she's got full lips, full nose and she's gorgeous and she's funny and she's not hyper, she's sexual but she's not hyper sexualized. She's not an exaggeration. She is just this normal, funny, charismatic character who's engaging to watch and I married on the show super easy. It's like 30 minutes long, you know, six episodes on Netflix. The second season is airing um, in mid to late April on Netflix. It's already done in the UK the first two series but it's just so fun and it really filled the void for me that Some Girls was because Some Girls was an amazing show which also had like a beautiful dark skin lead in it and I loved it so much and you know chewing gum is kind of filling the void that Some Girls left behind for me um and so I love it for being my quirky comedy show with a cool dark skinned black girl who's nerdy and awkward and doesn't know how sex works properly but still like tries really really hard. And I also think that what I like about the show is that it makes fun of culture and religion in a loving way. It is super easy to make fun of religion and religious families, especially immigrant religious families, without understanding that there is a love there but it's like it's still crazy. Like the, the craziness and madness of it is there, but it's done in a way that's humorous and loving and obviously 
written by people who know that reality who know about that experience and I think that's really important in making it comedic and not just hurtful or lazy or weak it's that, that you really feel the love in it and that really separates it from other shows and other people who might want to do a show like this it's it's great I love it I love her friend I love her shitty poet boyfriend I even love the two like really stupid chav girls that they have there that are just so like they're such stereotypes but they're funny because the show makes fun of them and who they are and not other people it's it's delightful crazy head which the first episode you first watch it and you're just like what the fuck is this but it's so good crazy head is a show about these two girls amy and raquel who are demon hunters who get drawn into this whole battle of stopping these demons from unleashing this hell gate and it very much is a spiritual successor to buffy and i know Every time there's a supernatural show about hunting demons or like a woman led, so I was like, is it like Buffy? And in my opinion, there are only a few shows that are really, really like Buffy in this regard. And what I think is often forgotten, it's not just the female led stuff, but it's the wit, it's the charm, it's the ability to, to understand your own canon and make it interesting and new, it's the ability to have charismatic villains and to have an overarching story arc that makes sense and builds and grows overall. And that's what Crazy Head does have. It has all of the the coolness of a supernatural show about demons, but a lot of really funny misfit-like you know, um, Buffy-like humor that really elevates it as a product because it could just be another, you know, sci-fi original if it didn't have those kind of beats. And I think the characters of Amy and Raquel are really interesting because Amy's character, she's the, she's the, um, one of the co-leads. She has just been, she's thought her whole life that she was mentally ill. And while I know there is, there are problems with depicting mental illness as like a superpower or like conflating the two in media because there are people who are mentally ill and they're not secretly demon hunters and that is totally a, an issue that I think needs to be discussed that sometimes people are really quick about like, you're schizophrenic because you have superpowers. It's like, no, sometimes you're just schizophrenic. But I think it does illuminate the idea that people are often when they are marginalized, when they are believed to be different neurologically, how it affects their life and how it affects the way people perceive them, if they trust them or not. And I think part of what I think works about Crazy Head and its premise is that you are dealing with two people who maybe do have some type of illness that is grown onto the fact that they have these, um, these abilities, especially in the case of Raquel. Because, um, Raquel also goes to therapy and she she you can tell that she lives with the stigma of that that even though she's not sick in that same way because she goes to therapy and because she does have her own insecurities that she is working through just her human issues that there is that stigma of her going there and people will look at her way and like they're always like you're taking medicine if you're going to therapy like that, that kind of like hyper like you're sick you need to get better you need to keep doing that and how you do need to go to therapy but when people are constantly trying to put you back put you in that box you want to reach out and you want to look for any happiness or joy you can find and even though the show doesn't talk about these explicitly for me, at least, the subtext was there, and it's really engaging. And I like the female friendship between the two girls. I like how it starts off kind of slow and then builds because they are in these circumstances together. And I really love the villain. I mean, Callum is such a great villain. It is played by an actor that I love. He was um, Detectar in Defiance. He's all, he was in an elementary. He's in a lot of shit. He, if you look up his name, which I will link to in everything down below with all the actor names and stuff, you know, he's in a bunch of stuff. He's just an amazing actor. And for me, what makes the show work is the combination of humor and fun. And the fact that it's got, you know, the, our dark skin lead, actually the actress who plays Rochelle, also plays um, a character named Cynthia, who's Tracy's sister on Chewing Gum, which is amazing because she, those two characters are so different, but the way she plays them is just so fun and nuanced. And I love that she's got her natural hair and she's dark skinned and crazy head. And, you know, she gets to have, you know, these fun emotional arcs and I think the thing I really enjoyed about the show is that 
while I like Amy, I think she's a great character, and I think it's fun seeing sort of like, you know, I work in a bowling alley, and now I gotta take and kill demons. I think what makes the show so special for me is probably Raquel, duh, but also the fact that Raquel is a cherished black dark-skinned character who is a woman. So that's the thing is like so many times you know the the cherished character is the white one and I think that Raquel is put into situations where you know she's powerful and stuff but people want to take care of her they want to help her they want to provide for her and that's refreshing like the fact that they're at, at a certain point you know that Amy is willing to die to save Raquel is so great to see because as much as I love seeing Raquel kick ass and be and be a badass, I like that she can be a legitimate damsel in distress because at heavy set black girls and get to be a damsel in distress. You know, it's it, it, and it's great to fucking have that, dude. And it's like, and and that's what happens when you have really really good sci-fi that gets race right. You get to have these fun moments, and I think that while it hasn't done anything LGBT wise, you know. Next season, guys, I'll be watching for it. I do think that it does a really good job of having really strong female characters who are emotional, have their moments of weakness, are sad or complicated, or who are fun. They are, are not, they're not strong female characters, they're well-written female characters, and that's the most important thing. And I think both of these shows do a really good job of showing that we can have sort of these diverse genre shows with dark skin leads and I think that the dark skin part I keep going back to because I think it's important because for so long so many of the black female leads we would get would be light skin or mixed race women and while that's still representation and it's still important there needs to be also a celebration of darker skin black beauty and seeing that in crazy head and chewing gum and have them be feminine and fun and cute that to me is just it just hits me right here right in my little cold little heart like it, it makes me feel it reminds me of why it, it, it combined it it, it 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 reminds me of how I feel when I would watch Merlin and I would watch Gwen and I'd be like I just wish she would get better storylines this is me having Gwen with better storylines and I think that Crazy Head and chewing gum have really just helped me out a lot. I mean as much as I love Killjoys and Killjoys is amazing and I will be talking about that show um in the future it it you know it does feature a very very light-skinned mixed-race black actress and while she's amazing and I love that show and I think it's great I like that I can have a dark-skinned black woman be the lead of us be the co-lead of a sci-fi show and she gets to kick ass and be a little cute cinnamon roll winning um if you liked this review um please like and subscribe thumbs up share all of that because it just really helps me know what you guys are interested in and helps me know what kind of videos you'd like and please leave comments or suggestions and everything i'm trying to get to everything as much as possible i hope that you guys enjoy it and um yeah i will see you next week with the next video and uh